Tate Chronicles now transmitting. Welcome to the Tate Chronicles on Healthcare Now Radio. And now, here's your host, Jim Tate. Good day, citizens of the free world, from border to border, coast to coast, and to all the ships at sea, I bring you a warm welcome. This is your correspondent, Jim Tate, and thank you for tuning in today to the Tate Chronicles. Join me as we cut through the fog that exists at the leading edge of healthcare technology. I have the pleasure of welcoming three guests on board today. We've got David Crockett, who is the Assistant Vice President of Clinical Analytics at Intermountain Health, and Albert Marinez, the Chief Analytics Officer at Intermountain Health, as well as Josh Rubel, Chief Commercial Officer at MD Clone, a leading data analytics and synthetic data company. Gentlemen, welcome to the Tate Chronicles. Thanks, Jim. It's good to be here. Yep. Permit me to set the stage. Intermountain Healthcare, I know the data statistics keep changing, but includes 24 hospitals, 215 clinics, a medical group with about 2,500 employed physicians and advanced care practitioners, a health insurance company called Select Health, and other healthcare services. MD Clone is a leader in healthcare data fluidity. Their platform, Adams, offers a dynamic and fluid process for data exploration, analysis, and action by any user. Gentlemen, collaboration seems to be the name of the game these days and the advancement of using data to affect outcomes. We've got uh, two groups here that have come together, and I'm looking forward to uh, exploring that uh, somewhat. First of all, what brought Indy Clone and Intermountain Health Services together? I can start with that team. This is Josh Rubel from MD Clone. The initial interaction between uh, the Intermountain team and the MD Clone team happened overseas. Jim, you mentioned border to border. We've got many borders involved here. Uh, Intermountain sent a team uh, to evaluate interesting technology in uh, uh, in Israel, um, and that was the initial interaction. From that from that interaction, uh, from the, the the visit that the Intermountain executive team took, um, we. Uh, built out a robust contract structure it was really based on kind of getting success out of using data the way you were just describing to create uh, valuable outcomes for uh, providers and the and the patient communities they serve at Intermountain. We started with a use case or two in the chronic disease space, in particular chronic kidney disease, uh, and have now expanded that relationship and see more use across the, the Intermountain landscape. Mm-hmm. Would love for the team from Intermountain to China. Yeah, Josh. Uh, well, you you covered that really well. Um, and I would what I would add, Jim, is that Intermountain Healthcare is always looking at opportunities to to partner with innovators. And we we really identified MD Clone as as an innovator in this space. Not not only with our with our strategy um, as we consider how do we how do we place real data and analytics in the hands of our uh, our clinicians and our providers, um, but also how do we extend the reach of research as well? Uh, and MD Clone took a, um, a rather unique and forward thinking approach to how we bring some of those capabilities together. Um, and so an opportunity to, to work together was birth. You know, uh, what, one of the things that always uh fascinates me is, again, the collaboration when two entities uh, come together. And um, I'm aware that there was a project that was done together that involved Intermountain Health's kidney services. Could you talk a little bit about that? That seemed kind of fascinating. Was that to identify high-risk individuals? Jim, it's David. I'll I'll take a stab at that one. Right. Uh, At this point, MD Clones become the backbone of our patient care in in chronic kidney disease and also in-stage renal disease. Mm. The Intermountain Kidney Services, uh, the strategy was launched in about September of of 2019, and it helps uh, those patients with chronic kidney disease and in-stage renal disease uh, to just ensure they receive that cutting edge, fully integrated, you know, that coordinated experience uh, through the course of care. But yes, it, it identifies preemptively, which patients are at the highest risk and puts them on uh, the track of kind of a value-based care, evidence-based uh, treatment, and just to lower cost and reduce the hospital admissions. What type of data 
uh, issues. So uh, it sounds like uh, in this particular situation, we're talking about a risk analysis. Um, and so what type of data elements are, are they strictly like lab values or, or you know, what, what's used to push people to a higher risk category so they can be identified? I guess Correct. by alerts. Or, yeah. How does that yeah. actually work? Yeah, it's David again. Intermountain Healthcare is yeah. world renowned for their care process models and that evidence based uh, workflow. So, a combination of, of lab values and maybe someone missed an appointment or they didn't have a primary care uh, physician um, assigned to their name. So, that algorithm uh, was kind of a joint development between the groups and that electronic uh, implementation of that care process model. But um, six to eight data elements and a risk score ranking. And again, preemptively, uh, you want to identify them well ahead of the time uh, when they actually end up in the hospital. You know, um, let's kind of step back and really uh, just from a more general perspective, technology continues to be a major player in healthcare innovation, but the complexity and value of technology's role is continuing to evolve. How are some of the newer technology solutions being used to improve care and how we begin to use data in new ways for future benefit? Jim, it's such a good question. Um, and you're right. There is quite a bit of uh, evolution in, you know, in healthcare, uh, data and analytics, technology companies, and so on that are really bringing innovative solutions. I, yeah, I think we're challenged in a few ways. The um, the fact that we have a lot of tools out there makes it makes it even harder to evaluate mm -hmm. um, and implement um, some of these solutions that are out there. Um, and so, you know, I think what we the conclusion that we're drawing very quickly is that the capabilities that a lot of these solutions are built on are available to many of us. Um, the key for us has been how do we identify those. Uh, those companies that can really serve as partners through our journey and our, have, the, have the DNA for innovation uh, and for rapid uh, execution of the tools and solutions that will allow us to evolve and adapt as the landscape changes. Well, you know, that is you know, one area of clarity, uh, you know, we're trying to look forward and see how the grooves that are put down in how data is, is created, how it's aggregated, how it's used. Uh, what we do now certainly is affecting what we will be seeing five and 10 years from now in terms of, of benefit. Um, and patients often win when healthcare providers and in a, uh, innovative companies work together but there's a non-negotiable need for patient privacy and security. And that often is a big challenge that makes these partnerships less effective. How's the industry evolving to improve collaboration in regard to these challenges and really move forward in modern innovative medicine? Jim, I'll take a stab at how we've been thinking about it at mm -hmm. Intermountain Healthcare and, um, and I'll, I'll welcome others' comments. We. Uh, patient privacy is at the forefront of everything we do, um, no doubt, but in partic takes particularly enhanced importance as we as we partner with uh, with others that are important are an important part of the ecosystem. You know, but we recognize that picking a partner becomes really important because um, you want to make sure that they that they share the same values and that we're driving at the same thing. One of the things that Intermountain has is a key partner of is a, a new organization called Graphite Health. Uh, and Graphite intends to um, be a not, not for profit public utility around how do we aggregate and um, have a common semantic layer for healthcare. Um, but what's interesting about that is not, not just that Intermountain is involved in, but it's this concept of a digital Hippocratic Oath, as we are going to bring a set of ethical principles around how data are being used in the context of, of patients' data and in other areas of digital innovation. 
and say, look, if you are, if you want to work with Intermountain Healthcare, if you want to be a partner um, with us, then we're looking to you to adopt these, these tenets of the digital Hippocratic Oath um, that we believe as, as healthcare moves into the digital age will be really important to protect um, patients' privacy. So that's one way that we're looking at it, Jim, particularly when it comes to privacy and putting that same level of, uh, you know, almost sacred duty as what you would think of a Hippocratic Oath to be. Albert, this is Josh. I, I think that's a the right foundation, and you know we support uh, we support the framework in particular around kind of the the treatment of uh, of patient data, you know, similar to the treatment of patients, which is really the allegory to the Hippocratic oath. And I think you know the 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 other element to bring up is um, you know you want utility um, in using that combined data set that you were describing. And you want that um, the kind of sanctity of the relationship maintained. And Jim at MD Clone, you know, we focus on after you've got data in the environment that Albert was just describing that that um, harmonized um, way that you can view patient data. If you want to make that data available to partners, to others in your organization, you've got to do it responsibly. And that's the essence of the Hippocratic Oath. I think that Albert was describing a second ago. And one interesting way to do it is with uh, unique technology from a company like MD Clone, where we take data and synthesize that data to, to actually protect patient privacy while getting maximum utility out of that data. And it's something I think the team at Intermountain is leading on. Uh, the, the teams elsewhere who are leveraging the MD Clone platform also get a chance to kind of taste that synthetic output. Um, and it creates an environment where you can collaborate more. Uh, and do what Albert was describing from a partner standpoint, which with much much less risk of violating that Hippocratic oath, which is um, exciting as we look into 2023 well, I, and beyond. I, I, I've I've never heard that uh, connection for it, Hippocratic oath uh, for data, but uh, it's really appropriate. I, I like that. Uh, let me just say to our audience, if you are just joining this episode, I'm Jim Tate. And on this episode of the Tate Chronicles, I'm speaking with David Crockett and Albert Marinez of Intermountain Healthcare and Josh Rubel of MD Clone. Intermountain Health, I know you have a program called Empower. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Empower program and how you envision this making a difference across your footprint. Yeah, we're we're pretty excited about this, and it's it's early days for us. But we have uh, in our in our data and analytics strategy outlined three core principles that drive our overall uh, our overall work, um, and it's embed, empower, and engage. And empower is in the middle of that for a reason. We want to get out of the way of our clinicians and providers to access data, to be able to analyze it, to be able to draw conclusions from it, to feel empowered to make decisions. Additionally, we believe that that empowerment can drive clinical best practices and can drive real clinical improvement at the bedside. So uh, this program, Jim, is all about how do we equip and, and, and empower, I apologize, I, we're going to overuse that for a moment, but sure. how, do we, how do we put data into the hands of clinicians directly and do so in a way that's intuitive to the way that they think? Um, and that has been the, uh, I think, the opportunity and strength that we've had with MD Clone and Josh have certainly appreciated your partnership in this space. MD Clone brings a unique ability in how data are organized in their platform that allow that that make it very fluid and frictionless to how uh, how clinicians would think about and query the data information, um, and so as such, is really serving as the bedrock of our strategy to how we take data to. Um, to many others of the, this just extraordinarily important group. You know, um, I, I'm curious uh, from the standpoint of MD Clone, 
Where does your data come from? Are you gathering it across Intermountain Health providers and, and, and clinical contacts? Or are you just, uh, you have a window in, into their existing data and you just uh, help uh, slice it and dice it and deliver it in some way at perhaps at the point of care or locating folks that are becoming at risk? Yeah, great question, Jim. So the, the platform is installed as core infrastructure at Intermountain. Okay. Uh, and uh, Intermountain makes their data um, accessible to that ND clone platform and then authorizes who's allowed to use that platform, similar to EHR or EDW or other sorts of technology solutions that Intermountain uh, um, uh, manages and, and makes available to end users. Uh, to Albert's point a second or two ago, um, to make sure that there is a, a fluid and a natural ability for clinicians, administrators, um, uh, other staff members to access the platform to, to get answers to interesting questions. Uh, you want to make as much data you know, kind of as possible available because it's really hard to anticipate what, what these amazing, talented people are going to come up with next. If they're trying to find a correlation between you know, a specific drug and a specific outcome or uh, care path and an outcome, um, you know, the, it's incumbent on us to not limit what sort of questions they can ask. Mm -hmm. And that's really the, 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 the purpose of the platform uh, to really allow their creativity, uh, really you know, trying to answer questions that can help the, the communities and patients that these providers are serving. Yeah. Uh, one kind of phrase I've been thinking about lately in terms of collaboration between uh, separate healthcare entities is that uh, when things work correctly, uh, sometimes one plus one can become three. So in, in terms of that, how is uh, Intermountain Health, you know, making that data more accessible for their provider teams across the system? Uh, and so if you maybe have a patient encounter, a patient comes to one of the clinics, is there data that is presented based on the uh, analytics and, and what MD clone functionality is doing to give more information or potential risk about this patient? How, how does that actually happen at the point of care? Uh, Jim, it's David. I'll, I'll answer a part of that, but there, there's an right. important point here. Uh, MD clone is not at the point of care, real-time patient care, mm -hmm. there is there is a bit of a lag on the data. So it's historical, it's trend um, right. baseline, and it's not inside of the Cerner medical record as point of care. But an important point, uh, it has been a, a full partnership between our data architects, uh, enterprise data warehouse space, and the MD clone technology teams. And for most of three years, we have worked to combine uh, clinical data and cost data and claims mm -hmm. data and some genetic data. Often there is no place in our data warehouse that we can answer combined questions like that. So it has been a great partnership and the requests themselves come from the clinical areas, the operating uh, leaders and clinicians. When they have a question, we try to bring the right sources of data together and there's no place else in our data warehouse that we have such a combined uh, data set staged uh, together to ask those types of questions. You know, uh, that's one of the things that uh, seems seems paramount in the collaboration uh, that y'all are involved with is that Intermountain Health and with their clinical perspective can say, this is the type of uh, data we need and this is how we need it presented. And here's the importance of this level of data. And then MD clone is able to uh, respond to, to meet that specific need. Is that how the collaboration is working? Yes, exactly. Uh, a fine partnership between the technology and the clinical expertise. Well, and, and again, I imagine the level of trust uh, between Intermountain Health and MD clone has, has to be deep. It has to be very deep to have that level of trust uh, to make this work. A absolutely. Um, uh, well, data is driving modern innovation, uh, obviously. How is the healthcare industry empowering larger groups to work with data? 
And why is this so important for the future? I'll let anybody take that one. Yeah, I can um, I can start, and I think it, I think the Interround team is um, a prime example of leading the, the way here. I think David mentioned earlier that um, uh, Intermountain is world renowned for the care process mapping and best practices that they not only implement but also publish for the world to use. I think those best practices are relatively well known again throughout the world, um, and they're valuable. But where the rubber meets the road is their implementation and lining up patient and provider and community behavior to those guidelines or standards is a is a um, it's really the calling of much of what our industry is focused on mm -hmm. uh, and how to make it easier better and faster to align those different data points to impact populations uh, today not in the theoretical sense but in the tomorrow sense you know which patients in, in the CKD example I think is a great one which patients do we need to prioritize tomorrow to improve outcomes for that population? I, I think that is the story of data and healthcare. And I think um, it's been a, a pleasure, you know, Jim, you mentioned a, a lot of trust between our organizations. It's been a pleasure to learn how that gets implemented at a place like Intermountain um, for us to, you know, take those lessons and really impact other communities around the world served by other health systems with Intermountain as, as really a shining light. And it seems like, uh, as opposed to a one and done collaboration, this is a uh, dynamic process between these two organizations uh, that as data requirements change and data needs change and new ways uh, folks come up with ideas of how data can be used to affect outcomes. There's really no end to the collaboration, I, I would imagine, because it's, it's constantly being improved. Yeah, Jim, I think that's I think that's right. Um, and I was thinking about you know your question, and Josh, you you answered that um, perfectly. I, I think it really is about how we how we continue a very close partnership. But I, what I wanted to also highlight is it takes quite a bit of uh, of humbleness as well. This is really hard work, mm -hmm. and there are. Um, there are pitfalls that we will run into and maybe even trip uh, a few times along the way um, on our on our journey to that to that to that vision of excellence and of, you know, exceptional quality at an affordable cost that Intermountain stands for. Um, and the, the partnerships uh, are what is going to get us there. And I, I think some of that DNA, what what makes those partnerships special are really what are going to produce outsized outcomes, and you know we're really fortunate to be working with uh, with MD Clone, who brings not only exceptional technical prowess and a platform that does um, incredible things and has incredible capabilities, not the least of we've talked about from clinical improvement and synthetic data, but also the spirit um, by which they're coming that they're coming to the table with. Uh, I think have really formulated the foundation for us to continue to work and um, extend that, not just for the our, our current projects and initiatives, but also sure. thinking about the long term as well. Albert, we're on a podcast, but you're making me blush. Oh, John. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Oh, I mean it. I mean it. No, it's 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 a journey. It's not without its challenges, but um, we appreciated it for sure. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, that's one thing, uh, kind of summing up here a little bit, that's one thing, the data has become codified and, and, and made discrete, and we're getting so much data and more types of data every day that the na next great challenge, which is what y'all have taken on, is uh, how to bring real user value that affects outcomes to all that data of which comes every every day. We're talking, uh, this is being recorded in late October. I know that the health conference 2022 is just around the corner, going to be in Las Vegas, November 13th through 16th. I know MD Clone will be there at uh, booth 3233. And I think uh, David from Intermountain Health is going to be hanging around that booth a little bit also. So that'll be a, a good chance for everybody's going to uh, the health conference in a few weeks to catch up with MD Clone and maybe meet some of the folks from Intermountain Health that have been involved in this collaboration. Gentlemen, we're 
almost totally out of time. I want to uh, thank our audience for joining me in this episode of the Tate Chronicles. And of course, especially to my guest today, David Crockett and Albert Marinez of Intermountain Health and Josh Rubell of MD Clone. Gentlemen, thanks for coming aboard today. Thank you, Jim. Pleasure. Thanks, Jim. Likewise. Great pleasure. Thank Thank you. you. Take care, everyone. Thank you. You can find more information on this show's program page at healthcarenowradio.com. Until we meet again, here's wishing you fair winds and safe harbors. Tape Chronicles transmission ending now.